Hello and welcome back to Uroru Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton and this is the start of, I guess we can say, the new season of Elm Beans, <laughs> even though the old season was old. Now, there's a few things I want to talk about. I've upgraded my software and one of the things I've changed is my Pomodoro software. So you start a Pomodoro by saying Pomodoro start and you can see in the bottom left hand corner there's a kind of a gauge and it, it goes up and it'll go down I guess it doesn't go up <laughs> over time so over five minutes so um, so you should see that going down as the Pomodoro goes through so the other thing I wanted to talk about is that I I um, I have everything in Git, which is a source control system, and I'm not really going to talk about it, but um, I'm currently on branch hacking, which because I was doing some work ahead, and now um, I'll just go back to master, which is where we were uh, at the end of the last episode, and I'm going to make a new branch called E5, which is for, um, for episode 5. And so... This way we can keep track of what we're doing and it'll make it a little bit easier. So now we need to get ourselves started. Now while, while I'm doing this, it, the one thing you'll actually notice me in this episode is that I'm, I'm going to be talking a bit while I'm, while I'm doing something completely else. Uh, and right here you can see me setting up the path. Um, so it's kind of boring stuff, but because um, I'm recording the voice after I, after I did the video and I re-edited so I edited the video. I left in lots of mistakes, so you can see me faffing around as normal. Um, but the 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 idea here is that um, I can I can maybe entertain you a bit while I'm faffing around. So here we've got our um, to do list. I can't remember at all what we were doing. So let's go through and have a look. Um, so we just talked about functions and stuff, and we installed Elm test last time. So now what we want to do is that we want to actually write some tests. Um, ideally, we would write the test before we write the code, but we've already wrote some code, so now we have to write the test. Now you can see here, there's um, a system called Elm HTML test, which allows us to test against the against the DOM. Um, now, the other thing I should say is that actually we upgraded everything because it's been like it's been nearly a year. It's been since April, I think, since the last time I did one. And um, so everything's been up, updated since then. So this took actually quite a lot of time to do. It was a pain. It was a real pain to do. But um, I, I got it done. And uh, so this is just the Elm package.json. You just had the correct versions in. Now, I, I've added this Elm HTML test as well, which um, allows us to test against the DOM. Now, it's not actually, I don't think it's that popular, to be honest, but I, I honestly can't see how you can really TDD a front end without it. So you can see the app does welcome to Elm Beans. It had, gives 15 points and has a button, but it doesn't do anything. So, but it, you know, that's where we are. So now what we want to do is we want to actually write some tests. Now, so let's actually just go through, sorry, let's just go through the, um, the code a bit just to show what we're doing. So we have the module main, we have um, HTML, uh, we import HTML. Um, we have a function called points, um, which is not, to be honest, not a great function really, but it uh, prints the uh, points 15 and has a button. And then we have the main app, which just basically puts everything together. Now, in the tests, we have a whole bunch of tests which um, are not related to us because we just because they came in for free. So we're going to we should probably just delete these ones, I think, because we don't we don't need any of these things. So we'll just delete all of them. There we go. And let's uh, rename this. So, so this is for Elm Beans. So we can just put that in there. And so, yeah, we'll just we'll just write some failing test here. Um, and we're going to test. Uh, so we're just going to say that it fails. <laughs> and uh, 
So now we just have to write a failing test. And of course, I completely forget how to do that. So uh, hopefully I don't make a mistake. Um, so expect equals, ah, and this is this is actually really handy. Emacs, um, um, if you set it up properly, sets this up and you can see it takes two parameters and, uh, and gives you an expectation at the end. So we'll just uh, compare two to three. And so this will obviously fail because two is not equal to three. Now it's complaining up here because string and fuzz aren't actually used. Um, so we could delete those, but there's also a problem here with um, uh, the fact that I actually didn't do it properly. You need a function. Um, so the test actually uh, has, you pass it a function. And so there, I've added the function. Now we can delete those two things up here because we don't need them. So that looks good to me. Hopefully that'll work. And we're already, our Pomodoro is already over. <laughs> so it goes fast. I, like I said, I, sorry, there we, you can see it, it failed, This is great. You, I, I'm completely out of practice with doing these five minute Pomodoro. So um, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be too successful in that. But let's change this to a three and just check to make sure it, it passes. And it does work, there we go. So that's really good. So let's go back to our to-do list. Let's let's uh, let's make a new heading here. Um, yeah, probably you don't need to see me typing all this stuff. I can probably just show you when it's done and kind of pause afterwards. But there you go. So we got warmed up, and uh, we have to move on to the next thing. But actually, I think uh, we the uh, this is actually not in the correct place, so let's put, let's put it in the right place. All right, so we, we actually said we wanted to test that the number of points is printed is, is correct, and we didn't actually write it down in our backlog properly, and, uh, uh, and for some reason I'm not going to, I'm still not going to write it down, <laughs> but that's what we're actually going to do. I'm not sure why I didn't write it down. So let's start a new Pomodoro. And there's a little mark there at the bottom, actually. Uh, that just tells you that you've done one Pomodoro. And they, they kind of accumulate. So let's go into our tests. And now, like I said, you should write them, write the test first. But we obviously can't do that because we already wrote some tests. So um, probably next episode, we'll write some tests, do some tests first. So let's have a look at our source code. And the problem though is that we need to actually access these functions in the test so but i don't like importing main into the tests so i'm i think i'm going to create a new module um just because i just like main to be as minimal as possible and i'd let so we can move in something else so we'll just create a new module which we'll call app And so let's uh, just let's just copy and paste them. So let's move the points function out of main and put it into app. So actually, we might as well copy everything because um, that way I don't have to learn the syntax for Elm <laughs> as usual. And I, <laughs> then I'm always looking things up or copying and pasting things all the time. It's always better to type. Always type. Don't follow my example. So we're just copying and pasting all this stuff. But if you type it, you remember how to do it later, which I will never do. But uh, there we go. And there we are. So we've got um, our function here. So um, of course, we need to uh, call it properly from the main function. So let's just see if that works. Um, so we, uh, we will compile it. I forget which file it is. There we go. Uh, and oh, it's because we we didn't um, we didn't actually rename it. We changed the file name, but we didn't actually rename it. That's quite a handy feature of the compiler. And now it's complaining that main is actually using HTML. So um, so maybe we should actually move that other function as well. So let's make another function. So I'm not sure what to call it. Let's just call it frame, um, which is maybe not the best name, but I don't really care. 
we we can change it later. That's one thing about naming. Don't worry about it. Just just write code and then and then go back later and fix the names once you know what they should be. So we don't need to use the app there because now we're calling it locally. So that's good. So now main now just needs to call frame in app. You can see me mistype it. There we go. App top frame. So now you can see, in fact, it's it's not going to work. In fact, the editor told me because we're still using HTML here um, because because we're returning an HTML message. Um, so I, I think we'll just import that into uh, into main as well because there's nothing we can do about it. But we don't need the button div h1 or text. So we're just going to delete the bits at the end like that. And there it goes. It compiled fine. No problem. Let's see if that works. And we reload. Trust me, I reloaded. And it does still work. Or it does nothing, really. And that's called refactoring. That, that's that, that we've just changed the structure of the code without changing its behavior. And that's, that's, that's what refactoring is. So, so our app does everything now, and main does, does, uh, does nothing. But what this means is we can now test this um, without, without uh, pulling in main. So I'm just going to update our uh, to do because our Pomodoro is over again. It's so fast. It, but here you can see I'm actually I think I'm at 12 minutes now. <laughs> um, and uh, and we've only done one Pomodoro. So now we want to check that the points actually render what we wanted to render. So let's do that. So let's start a new Pomodoro. I still didn't write it down, I think, um, which is really bad. I mean, I'm just, just um, really bad form. <laughs> so let's move to the tests. There we go. So how do we rewrite this so that it works? And as usual, I have absolutely no idea, absolutely no idea, because I don't remember. Um, so let's just make a test file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this in. Um, so the reason, the reason I'm doing this actually is because I don't actually like the using the the name uh, test, and I wasn't sure actually if tests was mandatory or not. Um, so I just wanted to make it make a, a test to see if it was. So I've done the same mistake again, as you can see. I forgot to change the name of the module. So here we go. We'll make the new app tests. And it should fail, and it does. So that just that just shows us that our app tests is running. So I can actually delete tests now. So I'm going to delete that because I, I, it, it's just not very descriptive name. So I'm just going to delete it. I thought it was the case, but I wasn't quite sure. But um, like I said, I have absolutely no idea how to write the tests for the for the DOM. So, um, so. We're going to have to figure out how to do that. Now, now our points returns an HTML message, and what we want to do is that we want to test that um, that HTML message contains the points. So what we'll do is let's let's write the test, and we'll do our best as as um, much as we can. And uh, so we say Elm Beans app points contains the uh, points text. And we have to import the app module. It's always good not to get too flustered if you don't know what you're doing, because um, you'll figure it out. And if you're recording, you can edit everything all you're flap flapping around out. So what 
I'll just do is I, I'll just do a test and see see what I can figure out on my own. So I'll just say let's just see if I say if I say app dot test should equal Fred. So so it actually complains right away. Um, although it is actually complaining because app does not expose test because we didn't use test. It's called points. Um, but now it fails correctly by saying that there's a type mismatch. Uh, so app.points is an HTML message and Fred is actually a string. So this is actually super handy. And again, this is in Emacs will, will show me this. I don't even have to run the tests. So let's look at the documentation. And so here's an example of what we're doing. And this is actually really similar to what we're doing. They, it just happened to be the case that it's really similar, that they have a um, HTML div that contains a button that has some text, and, they, and they're actually testing that. So let's do the same thing. And, uh, and I'm going to pretend that I actually remembered what I saw there and, and wrote this all out from memory. But um, in fact, I, I edited out all of the bits of switching back and forth between <laughs> window where I'm just copying the I kind of copied and pasted the text. But typing is good because then you remember. So remember, type. Don't copy paste. Type, even though it's slower, because that means you'll remember how to do it. So there we go. We're slowly figuring it out. And finally we check that. So we 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 convert it to something from HTML. We find the bit that has the div in it, and then we check for the points. So it's pretty similar to what they were doing, but it's not quite the same because we have a div, and they had a button. So now it's complaining that it doesn't know about query because I forgot to import it. So um, and like I said, never copy paste. Never ever copy paste because you'll never remember. Oops. So there we go. And that's complaining that expect is not used, but I will use it eventually, so I'm not going to worry about it. So we'll just leave it there. All right. So let's give it a test, see what happens. And it doesn't work. And the reason is because it says query find cannot find tag div. And I was worried about that because I wasn't sure what it meant by tag. Um, so it doesn't know it doesn't know about divs. So possibly we don't need that div. But let's just update the Pomodoro because we ran out of time again. So so we're just gonna delete that that uh Tag and let's restart our Pomodoro. But we'll rerun it now and see what happens. See if it works. And now it says query has text points, but of course that's not the correct text. What's actually in the thing is points colon 15. That's why I couldn't find it. So now let's try it. And it works. Yay! I'm happy. <laughs> so eventually. Now, in my defense, I'm doing this very early in the morning. Well, it's not actually. You can see it's 10.39. That's not that early in the morning. I have no excuse at all. <laughs> so let's uh, so let's have a look at our production code again. And so we also want to check to, to make sure that we have the button. Now, we don't really need to test that the button has the text next turn. Because when we run the app, we can see whether it has that that text or not. It's kind of it's 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 kind of a static thing, um, so you don't really need to test that. Um, and so I prefer not to test it if I if I don't. But we do need to test that the that it actually has a button. That's all we really need to test. So let's try and make a test for that, and let's see if I can remember the syntax. Again, type it all out just so that you get used to it. And eventually, once you've done it 10,000 times, you, it really does become second nature. 
Um, I've worked on, on, you know, so many different languages and, and frameworks that uh, I always forget all of them. So don't, don't waste time memorizing stuff, but do type just so you remember how to do it. Eventually, once you've worked for a couple of weeks on something, you won't ever have to look things up again. Because I could have totally co copied and pasted that from the from the lines above. So I'm not going to check that it has text. I'm just going to do that and see see how that works. So, uh, but there's a little red thing here, and it's saying again that. Um, so it's hoping to get an expectation, but it's getting a query single message. So, um, so it's kind of unfortunate that find doesn't return an expectation, um, but that's where it goes. So we will actually check for the text, even though we don't care what the text is, uh, I'll do it anyway. Because that just gets us to where we want to go as quickly as possible. There may be other ways of doing it, uh, but I didn't really want to worry about it. And so it passed, so we're good. So let's just make sure that it failed. Now if I modify it, just make attorney and and then you can see that it fails. I love the, the error messages actually in this uh, system. They're so clear um, and it really does help you a lot. So now we have some tests, which is excellent. So now, the only thing that we need to do now is that um, we don't actually know, like we've, we've written these tests, so these are, these are nice tests, I, I mean, they're not fantastic, but they're not, they're not horrible either, but we don't actually know that we're calling points from frame, so we need to actually call it, and we don't know for sure that we've actually done that, um, and uh, and like I said, we've got some decent tests for it now, but we need to show that we're calling it. But we're kind of running short on time. So um, let's just put this into Git. We'll just commit it into Git. And um, yeah, this is not maybe the best um, commit message on earth. <laughs> so I <laughs> do write better ones than that. And um, um, yeah, so that's about it. Like, um, it, we're kind of um, running out of time here, um, or at least I'm running out of time. It, it's, um, it's kind of short episode actually, but uh, because I have to get some work done, I think we're going to call it a day. And we'll just um, set this uh, task as done because we've actually done it. And then after that, I think we will just call it a day. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and we will try and get one out the door again pretty soon. So have a good time and see you next time.